Good morning. It is great to see everybody out today. If you would, uh, get, a, get a piece of paper so you can take notes or maybe open your Bibles to the Proverbs. Proverbs. And you can take notes if you like to write in your Bible in the corners of it as we go through. And we will learn another lesson from the Proverbs. Last week, if you remember, we issued a challenge. We've got this out there. There's probably some more copies out there if you didn't get a copy of it. But it lists chapters 1 all the way through chapter 21 or 31 on the back of the, of the page there. And what we have challenged everyone to do is a chapter a day. There's 31 chapters, 31 days in a month, uh, if you, more or less. So you can go chapter 1 and you pick your own verse out. And of that verse, you say, what have I learned and or what am I going to do based on what I learned, based on what this verse says. Some of you are taking that challenge. I'm already down to today's date. So we've got, uh, I've, I've chosen these verses on this side of these chapters and I wrote down what I've learned, what I'm going to do, what I, and I'm wanting to be better. I'm wanting to get better. Last, and, and many of you are taking this challenge, and I appreciate that so much. I want to encourage you to take it. You say, well, I, I really got off a day or two. Just get started today. This is no certain date, but at the end of the 31-day period, at the end of the month, you will have grown. You will be better. Now, to what degree? That's up to the individual. That's up to our circumstances. But we will be better if we take this challenge. Some of you are taking the challenge to the point you said, uh, one of you came to me and said, that little line that you left to say what I've learned and what I'm going to do is just not enough. There's not enough space there. I've got, I've got, to get a, I've got a notebook and I've started writing in it. And that's great. Uh, someone said, how can you just pick one verse? There's so many. And that's true. It's so difficult to decide which one that you're going to, to work on. And we can't do it all. But let me encourage you to take the challenge. Because last week, the word that we looked at, the lesson that we learned from the Proverbs was wisdom. Wisdom. A proverb is, as we mentioned last week, a short, wise saying that effectively means it effectively does it. It, it makes an effect. Effectively expresses a truth or a useful thought. So these sayings that we're going to see throughout the Proverbs, as you take this challenge, you're going to say, hey, that is a short, it's a wise saying that expresses a great truth, a useful thought that I can put into my life and I can live it out and apply it and be a better person. And it's based on a wise thought. There's so many thoughts out there. There's so many short statements that are given by all kinds of men from all kinds of cultures. But Solomon's statements are wise and they are inspired by God. So as we read these wise statements, we're hearing from God. And we talked about the importance of these wise statements. It'll help us to become more wise, be filled with wisdom. So last week we talked about how valuable wisdom was and how it was worth more than gold and silver and how it was worth more than rubies. And if we get wisdom, it's better than anything else that you can think of. Today we're going to learn another lesson and that lesson is going to be... Uh, by the way, that is the, uh, that is the sheet. If you haven't got one, that's what you're looking for out the back. But we're going to be talking about words. Last week was wisdom. This week we're going to be talking about words. People's words matter. You've heard the little statement, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never what? Harm me or hurt me. Wrong. That's a wrong statement. You grew up with that. Oh, you're teaching your kids. Well, sticks and stones may break your bones. But now words can never harm you. That is a sheer false statement. People's words, what comes out of our mouth, matter. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. we got to get it. It's, it's a very, very important. And when we don't speak wise words, it can cut deeply. It can wound uh, 
to the very marrow of your bones, down deep in your soul. People's words actually matters. Brother Malcolm just read this statement from Proverbs a moment ago. These six things does that the Lord hate. But now, seven is, is a, really an abomination to Him. But out of these seven things that He listed, proud look, look at three of them. It talks about the tongue. A lying tongue. God hates that. It's an abomination to God. Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides, a wicked imagination, people that think bad thoughts, swift that be uh, swift running to mischief, they want to get in trouble all the time. But look, a false witness, somebody that will stand up and lie about somebody else, and he that sows discord among brethren. Go ahead and whisper to this brethren one thing, and whisper to this brother another thing, and you sowing with your tongue, with your lips, you're sowing discord with your words. You're, you're pitting one brother against another. God hates that. So of the seven things that are an abomination to God, three of those seven things talk about your words. And that's, that speaks a lot. That says something. Our words matter. We have to be very, very careful because words can come packaged in a sweet, sweet envelope or a sweet package. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse numbers 3 through 4, it says, The lips of a strange woman, that is a, an immoral woman, a, a woman who practices and does things immorally, her lips are as a drop as a honeycomb. Oh, she speaks with such sweetness. It's packaged so nice. And her mouth is smoother than oil. When she speaks, it just comes out so sweet and so smooth. That's what our lips can do. But her end is bitter. That means that what's going to happen, her intentions, her purpose, the end result of what's going to happen is bitter. Bitter as wormwood, which is a term, uh, bitter weed and so forth. It's sharp as a two-edged sword. It'll cut you coming and it'll cut you going. So our words matter. And they can come packaged in a sweet little package, but they can hurt and harm. So what we're going to learn about our words today are several things that from the Proverbs. And we can talk about more. You can go to James chapter number 3, and it talks a great deal about the tongue and, 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 and its potential damage to relationships and to our relationship with God Himself. But we're going to learn this lesson from the Proverbs and see that it's just reiterating this wise thoughts that even James echoed through his inspiration. The first thing we're going to learn about wisdom, other than the fact that words matter, is zip it. Zip it. What does that mean, young people? Shut up. <laughs> That's right. Shut up. The first thing we can word, learn about our words, uh, the wise thing we can learn about our words simply is just keep your mouth shut. I struggle with that. I struggle with that. Now, it's wise for me to zip it. But so many times when something's going on over there and I'm over here doing this and talking to you and I hear that going on, what is my urge? I want to get in their conversation. And I want to tell them, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to uh, think about. And when somebody says something to you, you, you just pop it off. You know, the wise thing, that according to Solomon, the inspiration from God, a wise thing is to keep the mouth shut. And it is very difficult to do. But if we practice that in our lives, it can change our lives for the positive. And it can help our relationships. Look at some of these Proverbs. Ten Verse 19. Proverbs 10, verse 19. In the multitude of words, and I'm reading from the King James Version. I, I recommend go ahead and get another translation, a good translation of the Bible, and compare them to help clarify certain words that may be hard to understand in the King James Version. But here's the King James Version. In the multitude of words... There wanteth not sin. When you want something, that means you lack something. If any of you lack wisdom, you know, you're in want of it. You need it. You're lacking. 
So here it is. There wanteth not sin, meaning there is no lack of sin. In the multitude of words, the more you talk, there is no lack of sin. Sin's going to be in that. But he that refraineth his lips, keeps his mouth shut, is wise. In other words, Solomon is saying, the more you talk, the more likely it is that sin will come out. But if you refrain your lips, there's wisdom in that. Look at the next proverb. Chapter 13, verse 3 says, He that keepeth his mouth. And the word keep there means guard. You guard your mouth. You watch what comes out of your mouth. A person that guards his mouth actually guards his life. The way your life progresses is very much connected with what comes out of your mouth. So guard your mouth, you'll guard your whole life. He says, but, contrary to that, he that opens wide his lips, he means he just talks, he talks, he talks. The more that does that shall have destruction. You're more likely to live a hard life with lots of problems by talking a lot. Continue on in this vein of thought, this lesson about our words. 14 verse 33 says, Wisdom rests in the heart of him that hath understanding. In other words, it's inside you. It stays inside you. But, contrary to that, which is in the midst of fools is made known. In other words, a foolish man, if he's got it in his heart, if he's got it in his mind, if it's in his, if it just runs through his brain, it's going to come out of his mouth. He makes it known. But a wise person, that wisdom is in his heart, it's in his brain, it's in his mind, but he doesn't always speak it out. He doesn't always just pour it out of his mouth. So wisdom can rest inside you. But if you're a fool, you don't let nothing stay inside you. You just got to talk it. If it comes to your hand, you talk it. And that is a very unwise thing to do. Chapter 15, verse 2, he says, The tongue... Of the wise uses knowledge. Rightly. That means when you know something, when you speak it out, you use that knowledge in a right way. Now there's lots of people that have a lot of knowledge about things, but they don't use it in the right way. But a wise person will use his tongue, what he knows, in a right way. But on the contrary to that, the mouth of fools just pours out foolishness. They don't have wisdom. They don't have knowledge. But yet they don't mind giving their two cents worth. They'll sure share it. Even though they're not using... Even if they have some knowledge, they're not using it rightly. And it causes more damage than help. Chapter 18, verse 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snare, trap of his soul. In 17, verse 28. Even a fool, even a fool, when he holds his peace, when he zips it, that's what we're talking about in this lesson, this portion of the lesson, when a fool zips his tongue, he is counted as wise. People sitting over there saying, hey, he must be a pretty wise fella. In fact, he's a fool. But he he zipped it, so it appears that he's wise. He that shutteth his lips, he that zips it, is esteemed a man of understanding. I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said, it's better to sit as a fool and let people think you're a fool and keep your mouth shut than to open your mouth and remove all the doubt that you are a fool. Just don't say anything. But actually when you don't say anything, people are more likely to think that you're a wise man or woman of understanding. So zip it. In 21 verse 23, Whoso keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. That's just another way of saying what we've already said in a previous proverb. And as you do your proverb challenge, you're going to see that a lot through the 31 chapters. Hey, I've read this before. You sure have because it was worth saying again. He repeats these proverbs. Sometimes he puts them in a different way. Sometimes he repeats them word by word. But if you guard your mouth, 
and you guard your tongue, you're going to have a lot fewer troubles. Here's the next lesson we learn about words. Not just zip it, but think before speaking. I found this cartoon. I don't like to think before I speak. I like to be just as surprised as everybody else about what comes out of my mouth. That's what a lot of people think. I don't want to think before I talk. I want to be just as surprised as everybody else of what's coming out of my mouth. Some people talk and talk and talk, and they don't even think about what they're saying. If it hits their brain, it comes out of their mouth. And that's a very unwise practice. Here's what Solomon says about it in verse 28 of chapter 15. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. You ask them a question and they think about it. They study about it. They want to move it around in their mind before they answer the question. But, on the contrary, the mouth of the wicked just pours out evil things. They haven't thought about it. It just whatever pops in their head. It comes out of their mouth. And most of that, of course, is evil stuff because they're not wise to begin with. He also says in chapter 18, verse 13, He that answereth a matter before he hears it, before he really thinks about it, before he studies it, before he works it around in his mind, it is folly and it's a shame unto him. In other words, think about it before you talk. Listen to all the facts. So many times something will happen in our society and the news media, wanting to be first to get it on the air, will just pour out all these statements. And you find out two or three days later that none of that was true. They didn't really study the matter out. They didn't find the details. They just heard something was going on over there and they went to report it to everybody. You study the matter first. Otherwise, it's foolish. Think about it. Chapter 29, verse 20 says, Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? Do you see somebody who who really doesn't think before he speaks? Well, there is more hope of a fool than for him. There's there's no hope for a fool. Solomon says that over and over and over again in the Proverbs. Fools are going to be destroyed. But there's more hope of a fool than for somebody that is hasty in his words. He doesn't use his words uh, correctly or he speaks before he thinks. Young people, who is that? Look up on the board. Pinocchio, that's exactly right. And what happens to Pinocchio's nose? It grows long. Why does it grow long? Exactly. He told a story. And when you tell a story, his nose grows. And there's old Jimmy D. Cricket, what's his name? Jimmy D. Cricket. Anyway, he's getting pointing his finger and saying, shame on you, because you told a story. What's a way to say that just brass tacks? Lie. In other words, don't lie. We need to use our words to tell truth. Don't lie. There's no room for lying. Here's what Solomon says about it in these Proverbs, these short wise sayings. Chapter 12, verse 22, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Malcolm just read that a while ago from Proverbs chapter 6. He talks about lying lips. Seven things are, are, are bad. Six things are, are bad. Abomination. Seven is abomination. Let me tell you one of them is lying tongue. People who lie, people who have false witnesses and lies about people, they're an abomination to the Lord. But they that deal truly, if you speak truth, then God is delighted with you. You say, how do I, how do I make God say, I'm delighted? How do you delight God? Tell the truth. When you tell the truth, God is delighted with that. When you tell a lie, it's an abomination. That's a very bad thing, young people. We don't want to lie. Chapter 12, verse 19 says, The lip of truth shall be established forever. If you tell the truth, it's the truth. And it's it's so true that it's going to be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. You tell a lie, it's a lie. And it will fall like a house of cards. Here's what... Somebody says, and it's right out of Solomon, it's right out of Proverbs. If you tell the truth, wherever you are, in whatever circumstance you're in, you don't have to remember what you said. Why? Because it's the truth. It's the truth. 
if, if you lie to this person over here, tell them a, a falsehood, then when you get over to this person, you're about to say something on that subject, you've got to think. Now, what did I tell him? What did I tell her? And you've got to remember. Uh, I believe I told her this, so I need to remember that. And, uh, and somebody says, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. If we're going to lie to this one, lie to that one, lie to that one, we're, we're building a very, very tangled web. But if you tell the truth to Johnny, then when you go to Sam, if it's the truth, it's the truth. And it's established forever. It don't, truth don't change. Our understanding of certain facts may change, but truth don't change. It's the truth. He says, oh, and we're going to move to the next one. Don't gossip. Don't, go, don't lie. Don't gossip. Here's a picture of two people talking behind her back, and she's hearing it. She knows they're gossiping about her. What's that look on her face say, class? Mad. Mad. Upset. Hurt. Look what the Proverbs says about that. Proverbs 18, 8. The words of a tale bearer, a person who bears a tale or a story. They're telling a story. They are a tale bearer. Another word for that is gossip. They take gossip. The words of a gossiper are as wounds. Sticks and stones might break my bones, and words can never hurt me. Yes, they can. There are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly, the King James Version says. That's into the very heart of hearts. Don't tell me that you've never been hurt by what somebody else has said. Because you have been. Because words do matter. Now, it's up to us to kind of, we can say, well, think of the source. Look who said it and all that. But it don't matter. The words were said, it went into your heart, it wounded you. So don't gossip. Proverbs 11 verse 13 says, A tale bearer, a gossiper, reveals secrets. Somebody come and told you something and you just can't wait to go tell somebody else. You just want to talk it out. But, on the contrary, he that is a faithful spirit conceals the matter. Folks, we all need to have somebody that we can talk to. We've got to have a confidant. We've got stuff on our hearts. We've got stuff on our minds. And, and it may be our spouse that we can go to. Maybe our best friend. And, and it's okay to go to these people and, and talk it out. Because it helps us to get it off our mind, get it off our chest, we would say. But, you better be real careful who you choose to go talk to. Because a gossiper will do what? They'll tell it. They'll reveal that secret that you share. You needed to talk to them, you need to get it off your mind, and you go over and you talk to them, and you get it off your chest, you get it off your mind, and they can't wait to go tell Susie, Bobby, and all of these other folks. Because they're really. But a person who has a faithful spirit, you can trust them. They'll conceal the matter. They'll keep it to themselves. So don't tell people secrets. Chapter 20, verse 19 says, He that goeth about as a gossiper reveals secrets. Therefore, here's the, here's the wise advice of Solomon. Meddle not with him that flatters with his lips. Somebody says, oh, you can tell me. You're, the, you know, you're, you're right in this matter. You can tell me all about it because you're the greatest thing in the world. Solomon says, stay away from that fellow. Stay away from that fellow because when you tell that fellow a secret, he's going to run off and tell it. So stay away from the person who is a gossiper. It's not good. Proverbs 25 verse 9 says, Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. If you've got a problem with somebody in your circle of friends or your neighbor or your class or wherever, your workplace, then you go straight to your neighbor himself. And discover not a secret to another. Don't run off to somebody else and say, let me tell you what Joe says. Let me tell you what Joe believes. No, no. If you've got an issue with Joe, who do you go to, class? Joe. Go to Joe and say, Joe, uh, this is an issue. This is, a, this is a secret. This is something I want to talk to you about. I want to discuss the issue with you. I'm not going to discuss the issue with Sam. That's tail-bearing. That's gossiping. 26, 20 and 22 says, Where no wood is, if you don't have any wood, the fire goes out. If you feed gossiping, it just spreads through the community. 
But if there's no wood, there's no fire. So, where there is no gossiper, the strife ceases. It stops. As coals are to burning coals. You got a hot coal, you stick another coal to it, it, it flames up too. And wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. He loves it. He, he, he's seeking a place to go gossip and tailbear and stir up the flames. The words of a tailbear are as wounds, he repeats this, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Solomon wanted to repeat that. You can cause a lot of trouble by gossiping. Here's a fellow that loves to brag. Don't brag. Don't gossip, but don't brag. Proverbs 25, 14 says, Whoever boasts himself, young people, boast means to brag. Whoever brags himself of a false gift. Oh, I can do this, and I can do that, but they can't do anything. But they'll sure tell you about it. I know people that will walk into your conversation and you've been talking about maybe you're building a car or building a shed or building a house and this person walks in and the first thing they want to do is tell you how they can do what? Build it better. Let me tell you what I can do. Now they may never have hammered a nail in their life. Or if they did, it bent when they did it. Point is, they boast and they brag in themselves a false gift. Well, they're nothing more than a cloud and wind without any rain. There's no substance to them. Don't boast. Don't brag. 20 verse 14 says, It is not. It is not, saith the buyer. But when he has gone his way, then he boasts. In other words, I'm going to buy something from Daniel here. And Daniel, I'm fixing to, uh, to buy this from you and you're going to sell it to me. And it's that psalm book. What do you want to it? Five dollars. Five, no, no, no. That's No, you're cheating me. You're cheating me. Five dollars. Oh, okay, I'll go ahead and give you five dollars. Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Oh, you're, you're beating me. You're beating me. And I take the book and I say, Look here, everybody. I got this book for five bucks. It's worth 50. <laughs> he didn't know that, but it's worth 50. A person who says, It's nothing. It's nothing, says the buyer. But when he goes off, he brags and he brags. Look what I've done. I've cheated him out of something. Folks, that's a person who boasts and brags of their, of their abilities and what they've done to other people. Proverbs 27, 2, Let another man praise thee, not thine own mouth. A stranger, not thine own lips. Don't brag on yourself. Let the community brag on you. Let your friends brag on you. Let other people brag on you if there's going to be any bragging to do. Never brag or on yourself. And then, be sincere. A lot of people will shout out to the rooftop, this, that, and the other, but they have no more sincerity about it than anything. Here's what Proverbs says in 27, 14. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, oh, you're so good, Daniel, it's so great, it's wonderful, you're great, you're great, rise early in the morning and shall be counted a curse to him. I'm not sincere in that. I just made that up. I'm just bragging and bragging and bragging. Don't say anything unless you sincerely mean it. And you can always find something good to say about anybody. I want to say that. Somebody said, uh, uh, can you find so something good to say about the devil? Can you find something good to say about the devil? And the fellow says, well, he don't give up. <laughs> That's good. So you can find something good to say about anybody. But always be sincere when you say something. Proverbs 26, 18 says, as a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death, a crazy guy who's shooting folks. So is the man that deceives his neighbor, and then he turns around and says, am I not in sport? <laughs> oh, I was just joking, Daniel. <laughs> you know, I just deceived you, but I was just joking. You understand that. I was just joking. Don't do it. Be sincere. If you say something to somebody... And, and it hurts their feelings deeply, and then you walk, oh, don't let that bother you. I was in sport. I was just joking. No, you weren't. Be sincere with your words. Proverbs 28, 23 says, He that rebukes a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with his tongue. It's better to you to come to me and tell me, David, you need to wear a different tie with that suit. You really do. That just don't go good. I'll appreciate you more 
Then if you walk up to me and says, oh, that tie looks so great with that suit, you ought to wear it. And then when I go out and wear it someplace else, it's a, it's a mess. I would rather you come to me and, and share with me some truth than to flatter me with my tongue and let me go on about my life in a bad situation. Finally, be kind. Be kind. Proverbs 25, 11. Proverbs 25, 11. He says, a word fitly spoken. It's, it's, it's spoken in the right way, at the right time, with the right sincerity. It's like apples of gold in a picture of silver. The background is silver, the apples of gold. That's beautiful. And that's what a word fitly spoken is like. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath. But grievous words, angry words. We just sang that song a little bit. Oh, angry words, oh, let them never from your tongue unbridled slip. Because you can destroy relationships. You can destroy your relationship with God. Grievous words will stir up anger. You can make a fellow so mad. I think I've told you this story before. But I was managing ShopRite. I was the manager for the, for the grocery store. A fellow busted in the door, and I was in a little cubicle counting down the drawer, and he busted in, where's the manager? And I put all the money under the desk, you know, I didn't know what he wanted. And she said, well, he's right up there. Thanks, you threw me under the bus. But anyway, he comes around there, and he has a half-open package of ground beef, and he throws it on my desk there, and he said, that ground beef is spoiled, I bought it from here, and I've started making me a, a chili with it, and I put this in it, I put this beans, I put this onions, I put this tomato, and I've ruined the whole thing, and, rah, 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 and I'm just listening. And he gets it all out, and he's ready to forbear, and he's fixing to get me, and I look at him, and I said, I am so sorry. Tell me a list of everything that you bought, and we will go through the store and just re replace every bit of that, and we'll go shopping for it. And he said, all the wind come out of his sails. He had nothing more to say. We got the groceries and we cart and we, we went shopping together. And I think he got some stuff that he really didn't put in that chili. <laughs> but I didn't want to stir up no more anger. <laughs> Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words. Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet. To the soul, health to the bones. 31.26, and you ladies, chapter 31, virtuous woman is in that chapter. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. We talked about that last week. And her tongue is the law of kindness. <coughs> We're learning lessons from Proverbs. Wisdom, words, they matter. Acts chapter 11, verse 14 says this. Peter was called by God to go to the household of a man named Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. And he wanted to know what to do to be saved. And he was a good man. He prayed to God. He gave gifts to, to poor people. He was a good guy. And he wanted to know what to do to be saved. He wasn't saved by his goodness. He wasn't saved by his generosity. Here's what God told Cornelius. He says, call Peter. He's, in, he's living in Joppa. And you go and send to a guy, named Joppa, a guy named Peter in Joppa, and you bring him to you. And here's what verse 14 says. Who shall tell thee words? whereby thou and all thy house, your whole family, shall be saved. Cornelius wisely listened to God. He sent for Peter. Peter came back and told him words. Words are so powerful. Words are so meaningful. Words are so important. And here is what Peter told Cornelius. In his lesson, you've got to hear the Word of God. You've got to believe it. Oh, I do believe it, Cornelius. And you've got to confess that Jesus Christ was the Son of God after repenting of your sins. And Cornelius was a penitent person. And he said, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And he was baptized. And his family. And I believe that Cornelius lived faithfully. I hope and pray he did. Here's the point. We just told you words. 
whereby you can be saved. Be like Cornelius and wisely respond to the words because words matter. Why don't you come? Why together we stand and sing?